Hello, I'm Dr. Guy Yatros from Dental Sleep Solutions and DS3, and uh, thanks for attending or watching this as a Dental Sleep Medicine Insider on why and how to add a deprogrammer to your dental sleep devices. What we mean by a deprogrammer, as you can see with this particular dorsal design, is we ultimately might want to have a button in the front. And you can order a lot of the devices with this if you're smart enough to, to know that you need that ahead of time. And we're going to talk about the indications of why we would do this, uh, what the reasons are so that when we hit on our devices that it only hits uh, in the front. And we'll show you how to do this. Typically I don't order them from the lab this way because oftentimes I do this uh, later on when I decide the person's clinching uh, and we decide to add it. Before we do that, we want to talk about the reasons why we might do this and the pros and cons of it. Uh, when we think about the anatomy, if we add something that hits only in the front, as these, as your muscles uh, tend to want to try to seek the, uh, uh, the uh, condyle, it's going to fulcrum off this pivot point in the front. And it's actually going to put a little more pressure on the joint. So uh, that's one of the negatives to it. It's going to load what we call load the joint. But the positives are if you hit in the front, uh, we oftentimes, uh, when we measure the, 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 the force at which we occlude with, we'll actually use less muscle force by having a deprogrammer in the front. So the indications for, for doing a deprogrammer are oftentimes if I get the device and the patient's clenching and they have some muscle discomfort, uh, typically it'll be in the master muscle, then that's an indication that maybe we want to go ahead and add a deprogrammer uh, to, the, the, to the device. Uh, if a person who clenches a lot and they're really beating up the device and clenching, uh, putting a lot of force on, on the device, uh, that's an indication as well. They'll oftentimes cause sore teeth. I'll tell you, my teeth are sore, I'm clenching on this device. And if we put the deprogrammer in, uh, it'll apply less force to the teeth, less muscle activity will take place, and it will uh, oftentimes help these symptoms. Uh, sometimes in these particular devices, uh, especially in a dorsal design, it'll also allow a little bit more lateral movement. So that's the other reason that we might uh, do a deprogrammer. But overall, the reason we do the deprogrammer is to decrease muscle activity. Now the negative for the deprogrammer is it's going to load the joint. It's going to put a little more pressure on the joint itself as it fulcrums across that pivot point in the, in the front. So if we load the joint more, uh, we got to be concerned of several things. Uh, one is it's going to uh, put more pressure on that joint. So if uh, we have internal joint problems, we want to be careful about adding a deprogrammer. If you have crepitus, uh, pain upon loading, then it's, it's contraindicated to do this. Uh, it does take up a little bit of tongue space uh, as we add the, the deprogrammer. It can make the, uh, the, the tongue space uh, be occluded a little bit more, so we want to be cognitive of that. And it's going to increase the vertical a little bit. And I think I neglected to mention on the previous slide that if we want to increase the vertical, sometimes it's easier just to add it in the front as, a, as opposed to all the way around. Overall, the contraindication for, for adding a deprogrammer is we don't want to do it on patients who have internal joint problems that we're concerned with loading their joint. Now, if we decide to, to go ahead and do this, you don't need that much material. You just need uh, some ortho acrylic. Uh, we usually use the clear, some way to mix it, and, and it's best to have a, a, a pressure pot of some sort that, that, that we'll be using. So we just uh, basically uh, take the top of the uh, device. You're going to roughen it up with a, a burr uh, to, to, to make it where you're going to add the deprogrammer. And then what we're going to want to do is, is add a little bit of uh, liquid uh, and powder together and mix up our acrylic. After we get our acrylic in kind of a putty stage, I usually take a little bit of the monomer and put right on, uh, on the top. I usually add the deprogrammer to the top of the device, as, as, as you'll see as we construct this, and just uh, mold it and, and get it uh, high enough is important so that there isn't uh, going to be any contact in the back. We can always take this down a little bit. So if you're going to err, err on the direction of making this a little bigger and smaller. So we add the acrylic, we smooth it out by adding some more monomer on it and, and get it all smooth with our fingers and we get it to about the stage that you see here in our slide. Uh, making sure you don't get any on the internal surfaces of the, uh, of the device and, and which would affect the fit. Obviously I've made that mistake. <laughs> We've gotten the acrylic in on the on the, body, on the uh, tooth surface and now the, the device doesn't fit, so be, be careful about doing that. And you can use whichever boil pot you want. Uh, we, we don't usually use the heat, uh, heated ones. We use the one right here in the middle on this slide. Uh, it's, it, it's really a good device, uh, one because it's inexpensive uh, and you can just put your own hot water in it. We use uh, hot water just from a hot water bowl pot like you see here on the slide. 
you can get those at Walmart or, or, or Kmart or one of those places and, and we just heat the water up to pretty close to boiling, fill up the uh, pressure pot and then uh, place the device in and, and crank it up to try to get it to near 30 as you see uh, uh, here on this slide. Uh, be careful if you're using certain types of acrylic like thermocryl, uh, obviously you don't want to use hot water. Uh, the purpose of the hot water is to make it set up a little quicker. So uh, we've got our the programmer kind of form there. We want to smooth it down a little bit with our burr. Uh, and then we're going to check it in, in, in the mouth uh, to make sure it's not hitting in the back. And the key here on this slide is looking to the posterior to make sure it's not hitting anywhere but the front. It will kind of uh, not serve the purpose if we allow it to hit in the back. So we want to get it really close, maybe within a half millimeter or no more than a millimeter of hitting. Uh, but uh, the patient should be able to go left or right and not be able to hit anywhere in the posterior. Uh, and then we're going to take some articulating paper and uh, mark it as we protrude going forward. And uh, we want to hit real evenly on that deprogrammer and making it long enough so that the patient can't go out beyond the end and get beyond it. So we make it just long enough to where they can't get beyond it and then shorten it back to right that length. So it just has to be long enough so that they can't get the lower jaw uh, beyond the deprogram that we put there. And then once we smooth everything down, uh, and we get it hidden even, we want to see marks that look similar to this, and then, uh, and then we polish the deprogrammer and uh, 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 instruct the patient to, to wear it as normal. And most of the time you're going to find that the deprogrammer uh, tends to help the muscle activity quite readily. We might also want to add uh, some sort of anti-inflammatory regimen of ibuprofen, maybe 800 milligrams three times a day for a week or two, uh, maybe some moist heat as well for this patient, or sometimes we even try that prior to doing the deprogrammer, but uh, in combination with, with those type things, uh, we can get these muscles to, to, to calm down quite readily, and uh, it's a great service uh, that, that, you know, for a patient who's having a little bit of challenges. Uh, my assistant, Melissa, can add this for me after we've trained her to do this, and you can train your own auxiliaries to do this, so after you uh, comfortable doing it yourself is not something that's going to take a whole lot of your dental time. So thanks again for uh, tuning in and thanks for reading your local, uh, I'm sorry, your recent uh, issue of Dental Sleep Medicine Insider Magazine.